we are a mind meld, let's say 90% of the time. And that 10% of the time, it could occasionally get loud, which is funny because, you know, walls are thin. And so our crew, we kind of keep the same folks, so they know now. But if you didn't know, you would think, oh my God. But it's always about the movie, and it's always about the film. It's never personal. I hope to be that voice in her head at times, and she's that voice in mine. And there are times when we have a healthy, healthy, you know, disagreement about things, but that's the best thing that can happen for a film, I think. An evil is coming that threatens our kingdom. But we have a weapon. <laughs> Why that? I'm Gina prince Bythewood, director of The Woman King. I'm Terrell A. Shropshire. I'm editor of The Woman King. I was very, very fortunate to meet Gina when she was doing her first film, Love and Basketball. I think we have a relationship now where ultimately there's, there's trust there. I, I feel very fortunate that I have early access to the scripts and at pre-production. I think it really helps when you can get in as an editor as early into the process so that you are more informed when the footage starts coming in. She is absolutely, when I decide to take on a film, the first call. If I had a bad day on set or don't know if I got something, when she tells me I've got it, I absolutely trust that. And on the very rare occasion when she says, <laughs> I might need another shot, I trust that as well. When you go in to get a gig, you know, to say, I'm the director, you should hire me for it. Like, you go in and you talk shit. Like, you, <laughs> you say all the things that you're gonna do, and of course, I believe everything I'm gonna do, but then you get it, and then the reality sets in. Oh, I've gotta shoot oil battle. <laughs> like, how am I gonna do that? What we're gonna see is the battle dance, which was an incredible dance that the Agogia warriors did prior to battle to get themselves pumped up, hyped up to go to war. Intercut with Naniska's speech to her troops of getting them in the right mindset to go into a David and Goliath type battle. This was four separate scenes, all important on their own, that build up to the oil battle. I loved each individual element and on the page it felt like it was going to work. The first element is the building of the termite mounds, Naniska's brilliant strategical idea of how to cut down an army of thousands to make it manageable for them to fight. The second element is the battle dance. They used to come up with elaborate choreographed dances to get ready for war. The third element of it was Nawi, who has separated herself from the sisterhood. And then the fourth element was Naniska's big speech. All four of them worked on their own, but it wasn't building up to the fervor that we needed it to build to. We started first with intercutting the building of the termite mounds, the preparing for war with the battle dance, and then also Nawi getting ready on her own. And then the speech came after, and it was working well, but it was still missing one more element. For a moment, we contemplated, should we put Naniska's speech within it? Naniska's big speech is Viola's big speech. I didn't want anything to diminish her moment, and so we didn't. Our ancestors push us to march into battle against those who enslave us. Our producer, Kathy Shulman, came in and suggested it again. And at that point, we decided, okay, you know what, let's actually investigate it. And so I tasked that to Terry. Terry, how can we incorporate the speech into the battle dance, not take away from the battle dance, and not take away from Viola's moment? <laughs> For 90 years, Dahomey has lived under the thumb of the Oyo. Our ancestors demand we rip the shackles of doubt from our minds and fight with courage. Each time they did a take, I had three different cameras running. For instance, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different setups. But within those setups, there were three cameras. So ultimately, when I'm looking at a particular shot, let's just say it's like 103, take one, I'm also looking at all three cameras at the same time. Often what I'll do is I'll just take one particular angle and I'll basically do a multicam where I can edit on the fly. So as I'm going through a particular scene, I can play it and, and then I can start like going between the different takes and 
and, and literally selecting, okay, I want to go here, or I want to go here, or I want to go here. And I'll just keep playing it over and over again and just changing the cameras on the fly. <laughs> So once the battle dance was built, it was really like going through the battle dance with Gina and going, okay, we love the battle dance, but at what points of the dance itself can we cut away to other elements that are telling the story of, of the preparation for war? I would choose to cut away someplace and Gina would like, but I, I love that moment. <laughs> So I'd be okay. so then I'd find myself sliding things a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right to get to the point where we were showing the best of the battle dance. We were showing the necessary information with respect to the termite mounds being built themselves. The last thing we did was working on how we were going to ultimately build in Naniska's speech. And what elements of her speech did we find was juxtaposing with the fervor and, and energy of the women. When we took moments like God this. When it rains, our ancestors weep for the pain we have felt in the dark hulls of sheep bound for distant shores. allowing what she was saying being energized and physically manifested in their battle warrior cries. We are the home man. It was important to me that nothing took away from Viola's moment, Naniska's moment, and so we showed Viola and uh, she loved it, so that was very cool. We are a mind meld, let's say 90% of the time and that 10% of the time, it could occasionally get loud, which is funny because, you know, walls are thin, and so our crew, we kind of keep the same folks, so they know now, but if you didn't know, you would think, oh my God. But it's always about the movie, and it's always about the film. It's never personal. I hope to be that voice in her head at times, and she's that voice in mine, and there are times when we have a healthy, healthy, you know, disagreement about things, but that's the best thing that can happen for a film, I think. Editing is building a mosaic, you know, and for me it's really about being able to tell a story and help an audience direct their emotion, their eye, their ears to moments so that they can feel more interconnected, emotionally invested in, in you know, characters. It's like I can shoot and I have intention in my head and I know what I'm going for and then to come into this room and see how she's elevated the things that I captured on set, it's magical and I will never understand how she knows to do what she does. I cut what I want to see, really, and I have the privilege of seeing every single frame of footage and hopefully I hope other people want to see it too.